the typical American dream is this idea of, oh, get a job, work hard for several years at some company or in some profession, and then retire, maybe in your 50s, maybe in your 60s, but whenever it is so that you can relax, do more of what you want and enjoy those golden years. Maybe more recently, you work at several different jobs or positions because people tend to hop around more before you retire and enjoy life. But is that trajectory good for us? Does the research say that this is good for your cognitive health? In this video, we'll review research to answer those questions. We know that cognitive engagement is linked to better cognitive function. Does cognitive engagement in your work count? Is it better to retire early and do more of what you want? Or is it better to keep working longer? Researchers utilized data from the U.S. Health and Retirement Study. This started in 1996 and lasted almost 20 years, utilizing data from over 20,000 people. Using a new type of statistical analysis, the parametric G formula, they were able to estimate the consequences of postponing retirement to the age of 67. They found that by doing so, it reduced cognitive decline by up to 34%. This was true for both women and men across all levels of education and whether or not you were in what they referred to as professional versus non-professional types of occupations. There was no evidence that the negative effect of retirement was due to the idea that people became more depressed or had health problems after retiring. Now, there were obvious limitations to this data. One issue is that they didn't have more data on the various types of professions. It was a pretty crude distinction between professional versus non-professional. Second, they didn't have any information about what people did at their workplace in terms of how cognitively stimulating it was or how socially engaged it might have been. There were no conversations or data to analyze about whether people went from full-time work to retirement versus phasing it out at various stages. And there was no data to understand when people did retire, to what extent were they still engaged in non-paid activities that might be especially stimulating, like grandparenting or volunteering. So this leads us to a question. Is it the fact that people kept working that preserved their cognitive functioning? Or maybe the idea that they continued to engage in cognitively stimulating activities? Future videos will continue to explore this question. But in the meantime, as you think about your work, what you do, whether or not you love it, your financial situation, and so on, you may want to consider, how do I think about work and when I want to retire? And how does my cognitive health play into that? There will be several more videos in this series exploring the idea of how we can be cognitively engaged and curious about our world in a way that's really neuroprotective. I can't wait to explore these ideas with you. So share this information with anybody who might benefit and let's go explore these new ideas together.